Today you're here to figure out what size battery you need for your electronic setup. Don't worry, this gets asked all the time online. And we're here to answer that question. And we're gonna do that by talking about three different key criteria. That's gonna be the different battery chemistries you're gonna run into. It's gonna be different battery voltages you run into from a regular 12 volt battery to like a 20 volt drill battery or something like that. And then the last one we're gonna talk about is kind of a way we have it set up that you can figure out exactly what size battery you need given your expected runtime and things like that. So the first battery we're gonna start with is a lead acid battery. You're, you're familiar with this already. Uh, the biggest one there is gonna be effective capacity and that is 50%. So assume this is a lead acid battery. This is a 100 amp hour lead acid battery. I'm gonna get half of the energy out of it before I start to damage it. So I can only use 50 amp hours out of that battery, 50%, and that's all you get. So you're paying for 100, you can use 50. So it's, you're taking a hit on weight, and you know, space, and all the things, you're not really getting the full use of that battery. And cycle life, so completely charging and discharging this battery, you can do that about 500 times all on, a, all on a good battery. Uh, so if you forget and you leave your key on and you kill the battery and completely discharge it and recharge it, that's gonna be a big hit to the life of that battery. On a good battery, you can expect maybe 500 cycles out of it. The next one up is going to be an AGM battery or an absorbent glass mat battery. And that one's a little bit better. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, similar size, it's still very heavy, but you can get 80% effective capacity out of that. So you're able to discharge it quite a bit, um, but you're still taking a hit on cycles. So you still only get about 500 cycles out of an AGM battery, but it will take a deeper discharge, which is good, especially if you're gonna use it for like a deep cycle type application where you're gonna run it down. So that's an AGM battery. The next one is an LIFEP04, lithium iron phosphate, LFP, whatever you wanna call it very common for a lithium battery these days and you're going to get 98 percent effective capacity out of that battery so you pay for 100 amp hours you're pretty much going to get 100 amp hours out of that battery which which is nice it's it's effectively twice as much right so that's where you get your energy density out of a lithium upgrade it's going to be from that effective capacity when it comes to cycle life lfp is really good there 4,000 cycles right so you're talking 500 for an agm or lead acid 4,000 for a lithium. So multiple times uh, lifespan when it comes to a lithium, you get more out of it. That's one of the key attributes that probably why you're looking at uh, a lithium battery even today. And the last one here is not as common, not as common as all at all. And that's an NMC. I know like Amped Outdoors runs an NMC battery. Uh, it's a little bit different. Um, the chemistry is not as stable, so you gotta be a little bit uh, aware of that and a similar effective capacity. So we're gonna call it 98%, and it's gonna depend on the conditions, how you discharge it, whatever. Let's call it 98%. Uh, cycle life is about 1,000. So double that of a lead acid, but nowhere near as good as an LFP, or I'm sorry, LIFEPO4, lithium iron phosphate. Um, so when it comes to comparing that, when you look at an NMC battery, yeah, there's gonna be, it's gonna be energy dense. You're gonna get a lot out of it for a given size, but the cycle life is a hit compared to another type of lithium chemistry. So that's something to definitely pay attention to when you're buying a electronics battery. So here we have the different chemistries kind of lined up with a bubble chart. Maybe this helps explain it in a little bit different manner and uh, stack them up. So you can see where the lead acid is just not that great, really at anything. Um, you got the AGM, a little bit better. You get a little bit more energy out of it. Uh, and then the LIFEPO4 and NMC definitely are much improved over those. And the reason why the lithium iron phosphate is like green yellow for energy density is because the NMC is a little bit more. You can get a smaller package, more energy out of it. That said, it's, it's, you're splitting hairs on some of this and I don't feel that it's worth the difference in cycle life and the thermal stability of that chemistry or battery. I'm not gonna go into that, but you can research NMC versus LFP. Um, and so there's some differences there. Now that we got chemistries out of the way, let's go on to voltages. I see this happen a lot and I wanna make sure we touch on this. When someone's comparing a battery, they'll say, hey, I've, I've got an option to buy a 12 volt LFP battery that's a 50 amp hour, or I can buy a 14.8 volt NMC battery that's a 50 amp hour. Which one should I get? Well, they're not both 50 amp, they're, they're 50 amp hours, but they're not the same capacity of energy. And that's where you gotta start playing into the different voltages. So 12 volt versus 14.8 versus a 16 versus a 20 volt uh, drill battery. They're not all the same. When you start changing voltages, the amp hours, you can pretty much throw it away. You've got to calculate, get it into watt hours, then you can compare them head on. So the example here, 
is a 16 volt 100 amp hour battery is not the same as a 12 volt 100 amp battery. So now that we got that out of the way, let's figure out how to compare them. The math here is pretty simple. You're gonna take your nominal voltage, multiply it by amp hours, and that gets you over to watt hours. And then you take that number and you multiply it by the effective capacity that we're talking about. And that's where you really start to change chemistries. So you put all this in there and then it spits out your usable capacity. What can you do with that battery on a given day? That's the information you need to compare batteries. So here for this example, we're gonna take this 12.8 volt lithium battery, 100 amp hours, it gets us 1280 watt hours. Like we said before, a 98% effective capacity. Multiply that out, gets us to 1250 watt hours. Boom, there's your number. Uh, here they are lined up so you can see what the different uh, effective capacities are. So here's why you're here probably. What size battery do I need uh, for my setup? People ask this online, hey, I've got three graphs. What size battery do I need? It, it depends. Am I running three little tiny Garmin's or am I running three really big Garmin's? The, the power consumption is very different. So your setup is going to be very different. Uh, also, like what a full day is, it may be six hours to me. It may be 14 hours to someone else. And so you're, you've got to make sure you're you're doing apples apples comparison when you're figuring your battery size. They're expensive. You want to get it right. You don't want to run out of battery and you needed another 20 amp hours to make it through your day. That's not what we want. We can fix that. The math is pretty straightforward. What I have here is a fancy spreadsheet that I've tried to make work in Excel. I'm not the best at it. I haven't gotten it to work in Google Sheets. So if it opens a Google Sheets for you, you got to get it over to Excel. Let's go to that right now. Okay, so I'm just going to use my laptop here and we'll kind of talk through it. What we have here is this top left battery section. You get to pick your chemistry, you pick your capacity and your voltage, just like we talked about. So let's do these two setups. You've got battery one and battery two. We're gonna do a lead acid. We're gonna do a 100 amp hour. And that's gonna be, it's gonna spit out a 12.6. And we're gonna compare that to a lithium iron phosphate, 100 amp hour. And that's gonna be a 12.8 volt. For this example and it spits out here 50 percent effective capacity versus 98 and you're right now this chart over here will populate as we start to fill in different things so i've got some we're going to fill out some graphs here we're going to do three garments we're going to do a garmin 93 h uhd we're going to do a 1226 and then we're going to put a live scope on it an lvs 32 and it's going to spit out the charts here so on the left, we have our watt hours. That's what we're doing here. The green is our lead acid battery. The gray is our lithium battery. You can see it starts off with a lot higher usable energy. And how many hours across this x-axis here is how much you're gonna get out of it. So for this particular setup, at hour eight, I'm pretty much dead. And honestly, we can go, yeah, an hour eight, I'm pretty much dead, that lead acid battery. And as that battery ages, it's only gonna get worse. You can see at hour 18, almost 17 and a half, I'm dead with lithium. So that's showing you that double capacity that I was talking about earlier. Now, if you start throwing more stuff on it, let's do, uh, let's do a hummingbird. We're going to throw a bird on there, a Helix 12. You can see how that changed, right? So hopefully this is a helpful tool. If there's any errors in here, please let me know and I'll get them fixed. But I've got this kind of built out with the different loads that I was able to find online. And I think this is going to help you guys get the right battery set up for you. If you found this helpful, Please hit like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps to uh, get other people aware of how to do this. Helps me out. And um, I'm going to put some links below to some batteries that I've used. I've got some experience with some chargers and stuff like that. Feel free to check those out as well. And uh, I hope this helps you get on the water and get the battery that you need right the first time. Appreciate you coming along. We'll see you next time.